Welcome to Bird Burger, where we talk about all things wildlife and nature oriented. Nikon, Canon, and Sony. Which camera brand you choose is a hot topic in today's photography culture. Whether you accidentally stumbled across your camera brand or were super intentional in your choice, each of these three camera brands tends to lean into certain strengths and get kind of a bad rep for some things that it may not be so good at. So today I'm joined by Noah Buchanan, who's an awesome kind of gear, gear savvy type of person and uh, an expert on all things camera related. Noah, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, really excited to be here today with you to talk about uh, Nikon, Canon, Sony, some of these big brands in the photo industry for wildlife photography. Um, and really excited just to have this conversation with you. Yeah, it's, it's great having you on here. I've really enjoyed recently getting to partner up with you and Hunt's photo and video in helping me make some um, good camera decisions and good gear decisions in uh, this process that I've gone through recently and just getting connected in the right places. While there's been plenty of camera brands out there to choose from over the years, what I really wanted to do today was just talk about the big three, right? So we kind of mentioned Sony, Canon, and Nikon because that's kind of the majority of what people talk about. Before we talk about kind of which camera brand is best and which might be the best for you, I'm kind of curious to hear what are the types of things that you think are important to someone when choosing a camera and lens setup? And why do you think those things are important when you're considering investing into wildlife photography equipment? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of things that you'll want to consider, especially if this is kind of going to be your first kind of step into a more professional camera system. Um, a lot of people that I work with, um, are already doing photography for a while but for somebody who's really looking to kind of step up especially into wildlife and nature photography there's a lot of things you want to consider um, really for me i think the two biggest um, things that you want to consider are size and weight of the gear and equipment that you're going to be using how much are you mm. comfortable carrying around with you how much traveling do you plan on doing um, so that's definitely one of the key factors that i always like to consider and two, also price point. Um, everybody has a different budget. You can get something for $1,000 that will get you started and it'll be great. Or you can spend several thousands, tens of thousands of dollars and get some of the highest end gear and equipment that's out there. So there's a lot of kind of places that you can look at for this gear when it comes to price point. So being able to determine what your budget is, how much you're able to spend um, and trying to look at gear in that realm. And then also the size and weight of the gear is definitely important too. When it comes to wildlife and nature, we're using a lot of big glass, a lot of big telephoto lenses, and those can definitely weigh you down, um, not only your wallet, but also your weight that you're carrying with you too. So I would say those are probably the two biggest factors that I like to talk to people about when they're considering making a purchase for new camera gear for wildlife or nature photography is what their budget is and also how much they're looking to carry around with them. Yeah, that's that's some good stuff. You know, I was pretty surprised in last week's sponsored video on my main channel that I did, which was the pro versus beginner comparison. And then we switched kind of, you know, the gear setups to where I was using the beginner gear. And you guys had sent me over that Sony a6000 with the 55 to 210 uh, millimeter lens. I was actually quite shocked by what I was able to capture on only this literally $1,000 setup. Like it was, it was, you know, the cheapest of what you could possibly get pretty much out there for wildlife photography. And I was pretty amazed by what I could still get. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's cool kind of seeing just, yeah, the, the range. And there's so many valuable things you talked about there. At the end of this video, I'll, I'll ask you what you found in your experience for which cameras people are tend to be most happy with, but for now, I'd love to just start out with Sony and see uh, just what you kind of think Sony has to offer in wildlife photography. What do you think maybe they're really good at and exceptional at and they're uh, or kind of in the wildlife photography realm? And where do you think maybe they have a little bit of work to do compared to the other brands? Yeah, I mean, so Sony was the first camera, to, uh, first camera company to come to market with a full frame mirrorless camera. The original Sony A7 was the first full frame mirrorless camera. So that's definitely a feat of its own. Um, so Sony has been mm. a round in the mirrorless world pretty much since the beginning. Um, Sony is not a camera company. They're an electronics company. Um, but that, in my opinion, I think is really beneficial to them because the technology and features in their cameras is really advanced. Um, there's so much customization you can do with their cameras. And they have a really wide variety of options. Um, as you were just mentioning, Jeremy, that 6, 000, A6000 
uh, that we had sent to you to do the uh, cheaper camera comparison versus the more expensive camera comparison, that's a $1,000 setup for an A6000. And that's yeah. going to be more of that entry level point. But then you can go to all the way to the other extreme looking at their A1, their Alpha 1, which is their flagship full frame mirrorless, which is really pretty much the best of the best that you can get for wildlife, nature, any action or fast moving subject matter that A1 is going mm -hmm. to excel at. So Sony mm. really does have something for everybody and everything in between. Another nice thing about Sony is they're also excelling in the video market too. So more than ever now, video is becoming more and more important for people to actually incorporate that into their workflow. I'm seeing more and more of our customers start to get into video as well. And the Sony video features are really advanced. They have some great mm. video capabilities. Um, so that's another big thing too. Um, another thing that I will mention that Sony has other differently or at least more advanced than Nikon and Canon at the moment is lens selection. Sony does have a hmm. lot more native uh, mount lenses out there available for their system, mainly because they've been around for longer than the Nikon and Canon mirrorless systems have. So you're going to get more flexibility when it comes to lens choice and lens selection. And you're also getting a lot more third party options too from companies like Tamron and Sigma that now have options out there for the Sony mirrorless. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the DSLR options for Canon and Nikon, you know, they have a very wide selection of lenses, but their mirrorless systems are very, very new. A lot, uh, Both of them, I think, gosh, like two, three years. When it comes to Canon, what do you think that Canon has um, kind of to offer in terms of pushing the wildlife photography industry forward? And is there any areas that you feel like they're kind of maybe falling a little bit behind as compared to Sony or Nikon? Sure, I mean, Canon uh, as well as Nikon have been around for as long as any of us can imagine. Um, they've been around <laughs> since the very beginning in the film days. So they have this long-standing history in the photo industry that Sony doesn't have. So they have that long-term loyal customer support that people have been using for many, many years. So there's a lot of photographers now who were previously DSLR shooters and shooting with DSLRs their entire life that are now getting ready to make that switch to mirrorless. And what Canon is doing that not that anybody else isn't doing, but what they're doing is giving you the ability to continue to use all of your DSLR lenses on this mirrorless system now. So even though mm. they don't have as many native lenses for the mirrorless system at the moment, you have the ability to adapt over that whole slew of lenses that they had from their DSLR system uh, pretty much without any loss of image quality, without any loss of focus performance, really without any loss of anything altogether. So you're getting a really high... Um, option or a really large option uh, of lenses that you can choose from. Now, they are not going to necessarily be native lenses, but with that adapter, it's still giving you that flexibility that you need to not have to go out and invest in a whole new set of lenses up front. Uh, a lot of our customers are just going ahead and purchasing the body with an adapter, and then they're using all of their current lenses that they already own. So that mm. is nice. It's easier to make that transition into it because you already have this whole selection of lenses where all you need to do is go out and invest in a body and an adapter. Um, another nice thing that Canon is doing um, that I just think is, is great is um, their um, warranty and protection and services, um, which is something that's probably not commonly thought about, uh, but Canon has a really great protection plan going now with a lot of their cameras that I've not really seen offered by many other companies where they're offering extra damage protection for cameras, lenses, and I think that's specifically important for wildlife and nature photographers, people who are out yeah. in nature, out in the wilderness, and can run into issues with their cameras, um, run into things breaking down on them. And repairs are definitely not cheap when it comes to cameras and lenses. So the fact that Sony has, or the fact that Canon has the support um, and the ability to get repair costs covered for cameras and lenses that you're purchasing, I think is really great as well. So that support system that Canon has is really good too. And again, I think it just goes back to their longstanding history. Um, Canon has been a big name in the photo industry for forever, um, especially when it comes to wildlife and sports and action. Uh, cameras like the 7D Mark II, cameras like the 1DX series have been huge names in wildlife and sports and action photography for forever now. So they have that really loyal following that they've built up over many, many years. And a lot of people yep. are remaining loyal to them. Um, and now that they've just come out with their new EOS R3, 
which is going to be their flagship model. That's competing up there with the Sony Alpha 1 that we were just talking about, punching at a very similar weight class and providing very similar features and benefits and advantages. But now you can use that with all of your Canon lenses. So I mm. do really think that this R3 is that step up for wildlife and nature photographers. And there's also been a lot of teasing about an R1, which is going to be somewhat like a 1DX equivalent in a mirrorless body. At least that's what's being rumored out there. Um, so that's something to look forward to as well. But I really think what Canon has going for them is their longstanding support of their customer base who's been using them for many, many years. Yeah, that's some good stuff. And yeah, that's super cool about like um, the camera protection warranties and stuff you're talking about. I mean, it's so important to have that, at least for me, having that connection with the company is just, is just vital. I mean, that's the reason why I, I'm a huge Apple guy. <laughs> I'm Apple over uh, Windows. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of that reason has been just because like anytime something has gone wrong, I just call Apple up and within, you know, within the day, within a few hours, it's usually fixed remotely or if I need to, I can take it into a store versus that was just never the case for me, you know, with uh, being a Windows user. So when it comes to Nikon, um, Nikon is a huge, uh, has a, has a huge photography base in wildlife photography. I feel like that's probably the, the biggest, probably the majority of wildlife photographers. If they, if we had to choose one brand are probably on Nikon, I feel like, um, even though that's maybe not the kind of the consensus in photography as a whole in wildlife photography, they seem to be really strong. What do you think Nikon brings into the table, uh, in wildlife photography and where do you think maybe they're they're a little bit behind. Sure. I mean, I think it also comes back to what I was talking about with Canon, that long-standing loyalty. Uh, as you were saying, there are so many wildlife photographers shooting with Nikon. Um, cameras like the D500 were an iconic camera in the wildlife industry. I would say that was probably one of the most popular wildlife cameras for many years. Mm. And we were selling tons and tons of those at birding festivals and wildlife <laughs> events that we go to. Um, so Nikon really does have kind of this presence in the wildlife and nature community as being kind of the system or the go-to system that you see a lot of people using out in the field. And it's usually those selective cameras like the D500 um, and also the D850. The D850 was another mm -hmm. one that was a huge success for Nikon. Uh, and really just kind of stepped up their game when that was announced. This new Z9 um, that was just announced at the end of last year has been groundbreaking. Mm. Um, we have received more pre-orders on that camera than any other camera <laughs> that's been released in, in my almost six years now of working at Hunts. I have never seen this many pre-orders for any other camera before, especially a camera with a price tag of over $5,000. Yeah. So that alone... I think goes back to Nikon's loyalty um, is very strong. Nikon has a very loyal following. And I think a lot of people have been waiting a long time for a camera of this caliber. And now that Nikon has put out the Z9, everybody jumped on it right away. We have tons of pre-orders for it, which is awesome. But that goes back to the same thing I was saying before is there's gonna be a lot of delay and a big wait time to get that camera unless you're an NPS member. Uh, NPS members have been receiving their cameras within a few weeks, usually less than a month after placing an order, whereas other customers are waiting at least several months, if not longer, to receive theirs. Mm. So that is really key as well. And this Z9 is outstanding um, from everything I've been reading on it and seeing about it. I haven't gotten a chance to actually take it out into the field, but playing around with it in the store and getting feedback from other photographers who are using it. Um, such as Ray Hennessy. I talked to Ray pretty frequently, and he got the Z9 from us a couple of months ago uh, through NPS and has really been loving it, and I've been getting a lot of good feedback from him about his thoughts and opinions on it, uh, again, specifically for wildlife and birds. And the focus tracking, the eye detection for birds and wildlife is just amazing. The speed of this camera is faster than any other burst rate than any other camera that I'm aware of. So you're seeing a lot of really groundbreaking improvements now with the Z9. The only downfall is the weight and demand for it. <laughs> so it kind of goes twofold. Um, it's an awesome camera and everybody wants it, but because everybody wants it and it's such an awesome camera, there's going to be a big delay and a big wait for it. So the fact that Nikon does have their NPS platform is really great for anybody who does qualify it to access this gear earlier than everybody else. And they're also coming out with some awesome lenses. They just announced a brand new 400 2.8 for the Z mount. 
um, which is looking very promising. So they are really trying to push things more into the longer telephoto lens lineup. Um, now that they have this Z9 out, and they know a lot of people are gonna be getting that specifically for birds and wildlife, they need to really put out the lenses to match with that. So with that in mind, I think Nikon is doing a great job kind of listening to their customer base, listening to their followers, and trying to give them what they want and what they're asking for, which I think is really good too. Yeah, I've, I've talked to so many, uh, uh, yeah, the in the wildlife photography community, a lot of the, I guess the influencers or professionals out there with the Nikon Z9, and it seems to be a very, uh, very largely appreciated camera for a lot of people, yeah. What's really interesting, and I've talked about this before too in some other um, videos, podcasts, is that um, sometimes we have an expectation that our camera is gonna be perfect and gonna cover kind of like any, any kind of mistakes out there and it's gonna be ideal in all types of ways when in reality, different cameras are gonna be a little bit stronger than some others in different types of ways. Um, Knowing kind of this, uh, how do you at Hunt's Photo and Video kind of help walk people through camera decisions and making these difficult types of choices when they're kind of, you know, when they're, for example, you were talking about the Sony A1, Nikon Z9, they're both great cameras. How do you kind of help people navigate through those choices of like, this is the one for you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a question that I get asked a lot. I mean, a lot of people are confused now because these cameras are so great is which direction do I go in? Do I go Nikon? Do I go Sony? Do I go Canon? Um, and a lot of times, because these cameras are so good, I usually don't encourage people to switch systems over. Um, that can be a lot of headache, can be a lot of hassle, and it can also be a big expense too. Um, so if you're already a Nikon shooter, I typically encourage people to stick with Nikon unless there's some crazy reason why they may need to go to another system. Same thing with Canon. If they're already a Canon shooter, I try to encourage them to stick with Canon. Um, all three of these companies are really producing some amazing cameras and you really can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, sure, there's going to be pros and cons to each one, but I think at the end of the day, the end of the day, they really do kind of balance out. Um, and I wouldn't say one is worlds better than another. Um, so really no matter what system you go with, there is great options to choose from. So really one of the first things I like to do is find out what the customer is already using, what gear and lenses they already have and then try to build off of that. Also, what they're gonna be shooting subject-wise comes into play. Um, not all of our customers are wildlife photographers, so they don't always need the biggest and latest and greatest cameras that have the focusing, the best focusing systems. So that's another thing to consider as well, what type of subject matter they're gonna be photographing, what their plans are for their photography is another thing that I always like to work into the conversation too. Um, and then from that point, really just trying to find something that's going to work within their budget. Um, something that they can afford, that it's not gonna break the bank for them um, is key as well. But I really try to encourage them to stick with the system that they're already using. If they've been using Nikon or Canon for years and years, I don't foresee there being any reason to wanna to switch over to another brand. Um, I don't think there's anything out there that's really that great over anything else that is really warranting switching mm -hmm. over your entire system. That's a whole lot of work, a whole lot of hassle. Um, and I don't think the overall benefit or advantages that you may see are going to be great enough to warrant that switch. So that's one of the first things I will kind of talk to people about is what they're using currently and then what their intended use is for this gear going forward and then kind of start a conversation off of that um, and find out what lenses they already own and then base things off of that as well um, i find to be really the best way to go about these conversations so it is personalized for each person i'm not just telling everybody oh go buy the z9 or go buy the r3 uh, i really do try to customize it to what that person is using and try to find the right gear and equipment for them because it's different for everybody. Uh, just because one camera system works great for some person doesn't mean it's gonna work great for the next person. So I think having those conversations, um, communicating with our customers on a regular basis um, and getting to know them is key as well. Um, getting to know your customer, how they shoot, their style of photography, that just comes with time. And having worked for Hunts now for almost six years, I built a lot of great relationships with my customers and know what they shoot and know the gear they have and can help them and assist them in making these decisions when they're going forward. Um, and I'm able to keep an eye on what's going on in the industry and project certain things. So 
I guess I do have kind of a, a really great position because I'm an avid photographer myself and love photography myself. Um, but I'm also in a position where I can help other photographers find the right gear and equipment for them. So it really does go hand in hand. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy to think about how many factors there are in considering, you know, which camera brand to go with and which camera model to go with. There's so many different things to consider. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, a really cool seeing kind of that perspective that you're coming and bringing to each one of these, uh, systems and kind of what, what, uh, what's useful about them. What, what's, what's good about them. So I appreciate that. So big question of the day now. After all this camera brand talk, I'm really curious to hear which camera brand is it that you commit to and you personally choose as your brand? Sure. Yeah, I get that question a lot, too, uh, because people want to know what I'm using. Um, and what I'm working at a camera store, I have the option to shoot really whatever, whatever I want to shoot <laughs> with. Um, so what yep. do I choose to go with? And uh, I'm shooting Sony. Uh, I have the Sony a7R three. Um, prior to that, I was using the a7R two. Um, but even prior to Sony, I was a Canon shooter. So before mirrorless mm. was a thing, I was a Canon shooter. And about four and a half ish years ago, four years ago, I decided to make the jump over to mirrorless. And at that time, Canon did not have anything out on the market for full frame yep. mirrorless. So really, the only option I had was Sony. Um, and I wasn't say I wouldn't say I was kind of forced into that decision. I happily made that switch over to Sony and have been very happy ever since. Um, I don't regret making that transition over from Canon to Sony. Uh, I will say, however, if I had waited another few years when the R5 had already come out, I probably would have gone with the R5 and stuck with my Canon system. But mm. I was at a point with my photography where I was really just kind of over the big bulky gear. I was just kind of uninspired to use my DSLR um, and hmm. just needed a change. For a yeah. while, I kind of got away from digital photography for probably a year or two where I was doing very little, little digital photography and was actually shooting a lot of film um, just because my inspiration there with digital photography, with DSLRs, just wasn't there. Um, so I needed something, some hmm. other creative outlet and kind of went towards film and shot film for a while, um, doing a lot of kind of nature and street photography. Um, not so much wildlife, but uh, more landscape and street photography. And that was kind of a good outlet and a good way for me to kind of realize what I wanted in a camera system. I liked a smaller, hmm. more compact system um, and ultimately ended up going with Sony. And when I started, just got a small prime lens and it was adapting over most of my Canon lenses. Now, however, I've gotten rid of most of those Canon lenses and are primarily using native lenses. Um, I'm actually using a lot of the Tamron lenses right now. Uh, for wildlife, my go-to lens is the Tamron 150 to 500 for Sony E-mount, uh, which came out last year and I've been blown away by that lens. Um, it's definitely hits all the boxes for me. You get that reach that you need, but it's not that big. It's not that heavy um, compared to other similar lenses. Um, and it's easy to travel with. It is small enough to fit in my backpack with me when I'm traveling, flying anywhere for events or conferences, and doesn't really weigh me down that much. So I've been really happy with that lens for wildlife, paired with the Sony a7R three has really done me really well. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that at that time when you were making that switch, gosh, I feel like I remember, I remember at the time, uh, I don't remember if it was Canon and Nikon or only one of the two, but they were, they, I remember they were quoting like, we will never switch to mirrorless. We are DSLR ride or die. So <laughs> um, you were, uh, yeah, you were definitely, um, if you were wanting to go mirrorless, you were having to switch to something else at that period of time, but exactly. it's good. I'm glad that they finally switched over because uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely the way majority of people want to go now. So. Yeah, thanks for sharing all your your thoughts. It's a lot of uh, knowledge and perspective that you were able to bring on, and uh, I appreciate you sharing all that. And uh, yeah, thank you for yeah, just all the knowledge you brought today. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. It's been really great. I mean, I love talking about gear and equipment. I could be on here all day. We could be talking about different cameras and lenses <laughs> all afternoon. So um, yep. I love being able to talk to everybody. So if anybody does want to have a conversation similar that you and I have had, but for themselves, if they're looking to maybe get into uh, more advanced wildlife or nature photography, or maybe just get their first wildlife and nature photography set up, uh, I'm more than happy to have these conversations um, with any one of you and help you find the best gear and equipment 
that's going to work within your budget and really kind of talk you through that process because it can be very confusing. Uh, there's a lot of information out there online when it comes to photography, a lot of forums, a lot of misinformation, um, a lot of people's opinions are not always being accurate. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of information yeah. out there and I'll just kind of leave it at that. But I am more than happy mm. to help anybody out with any decisions on camera gear and equipment. Um, I am first and foremost a photographer. I don't like to consider myself a salesperson, even though I do do sales. Um, I also do a lot of other things at hunts and I consider myself a photographer. So uh, I am a photographer mm. who likes helping out our customers find right gear and equipment that's going to be suitable for them um, and talking about it just as much as we all do. So I think that makes it really important uh, in a role like this. Um, I don't think you can have a position like mine and not be a photographer. It just wouldn't work out. So. I'm very fortunate to work for such a great company and be able to talk photography day in and day out, get an opportunity to talk about the latest and greatest gear and uh, do things like this with you, Jeremy. So I just want to thank you again for having me on today uh, and inviting me to come on and speak for a little bit to everyone. Yep, most definitely. Thank you, Noah. Like Noah said, if you're interested in talking more about camera gear and what's right for you, you can contact him through my description link below and he'd be more than happy to set you up with a good camera system. He's a great person, a great company that he works for, the company that you can trust, and I'd highly recommend checking them out if you need assistance in your wildlife photography purchase. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below and I'll see you guys next time.